Hello viewers. Welcome to the channel Amazing Civil Engineering Studies. Here we will learn about different concepts related to civil engineering. Time to enter the world of civil engineering. Please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for more new updates. In today's video we are going to discuss about Introduction to Steel Structures With properties of steel and connection used in steel structures Structural steel is one of the materials which used for any kind steel construction, it is formed with aspecific shape. These steel materials are of certain standards of chemical composition and proper strength. The steel materials are also defined as hot rolled products, having cross sections like angles, channels, and beam. All across the world, there is an increasing demand for steel structures. There is a big advantage of steel over the concrete in terms of its ability to bear better tension as well as the compression which resulted in lighter construction. The steel authority of particular country takes care of the availability of structural steel for construction projects. There are various structures which come under the edges of steel structures. These structures may be used for the industrial, residential, office and commercial purposes. The purpose of bridges for roadways and railway lines. The structures like towers are used for different purposes such as power transmission, nodal towers for mobile network, radar, telephone relay towers, etc. Steel structures are assembly of structural steel shapes joined together by means of riveted bolted or welded connections. Selection of a section out of those available in the market. Concrete structures are easily joined together by monolithic construction. But special methods are required to join individual members for steel structures. Steel construction is being used for almost every type of structure including multi-story buildings, bridges, industrial buildings, towers, etc. There are two main categories of steel structures. Framework or Skeletal Systems Shell Systems Framework or Skeletal Systems The main load-carrying elements in this type are one-dimensional or line elements, such as beams, columns, etc forming two-dimensional or three-dimensional frames. Examples are The frameworks of industrial buildings with their internal members such as crane girders, platforms, etc. Highway and railways large span bridges Multi-story buildings large halls, domes etc. Towers, poles, structural components of hydraulic works. All other trusses and rigidly connected frame structures. Shell systems. The main load-carrying elements in this category of structures are plates and sheets. Besides some skeletal members. Examples are 
gas tanks for the storage and distribution of gases. Tanks and reservoirs for the storage of liquids. Bins and bunkers for the storage of loose material. Special structures such as blast furnaces, air heaters, etc. Large diameter pipes. All other plate and shell structures. Properties of steel. Steel is an alloy of iron and carbon. The special properties can be imparted to iron by adding a small percentage of manganese, sulfur, copper, phosphorus, chrome and nickel, therefore variety of steel can be produced. Generally, the effects of different chemical constituents on steel are as follows. Increase contents of carbon and manganese will induce the properties such as higher tensile strength and yield strength but have lower ductility and it is more difficult to weld. If the contents of sulfur and phosphorus increased beyond percentage then it induces brittleness and therefore it affects the ability to weld as well as fatigue strength. The contents of chrome and nickel will induce the corrosion resistance property in the steel, the resistance to high temperature can be improved too. The resistance to corrosion can be improved by adding the copper. The slight changes in the chemical composition will result in the various types of steel. This type of steel is used as structural members like tubes, sheets, pipes, bolts, rivets, reinforcement bars, etc. The heat treatment and alloys used in the production of steel results in different properties and strength. The mechanical properties of structural steel are as follows. Tensile strength The stress strain curve for the steel is generally obtained by conducting tensile test on any standard steel specimen. Tensile strength of the steel can be defined in terms of yield strength and ultimate strength. Hardness Hardness is regarded as the resistance of any material to identification and scratching. This is generally determined by forcing an indenter onto the surface. The resultant deformation steel is both elastic and plastic. The different methods to find out the hardness of metal which includes Brunel hardness test, Vickers hardness test, and Rockwell hardness test. Notch toughness there is the possibility of microscopic cracks in a material or the material may develop such cracks as a result of several cycles of loading. These cracks may result in sudden collapse of the structure and it is very dangerous. Therefore to ensure that this should not happen, materials in which the cracks grow slowly are preferred. These types of steel are known as notch-tough steels and the amount of energy it absorbs is measured by impacting the notch specimen. Fatigue strength A component of structure, which is designed to carry a single monotonically static load, may fail if the same load is applied cyclically a large number of times. If the example of a thin rod is considered, it bent back and forth beyond yielding fails after few cycles of such repeated bending. This type of failure is termed as fatigue failure. Examples, bridges, cranes, 
offshore structure, slender tower, etc. Corrosion resistance Corrosion is the procedure in which oxidation of a metal in a normal atmospheric condition owing to the excessive presence of moisture and oxygen in the air. Corrosion of the metal is a very natural and rapid phenomenon in the areas of high humidity and places closer to saline water. Therefore the efforts to be made to control the corrosion by using galvanized and epoxy coated reinforcement bars but failed in practical usage due to the risk of disbanding, causing accelerated corrosion. Corrosion resistance elements such as copper, phosphorus, and chromium are added in appropriate measure to the metal which results in corrosion resistance steel. Connections in steel structures The steel structures are constructed by properly connecting the available standard sections. The connections are an important part of steel structure and are designed more conventionally than any individual members. There is a discrepancy between the actual behavior and the analysis of steel structure is large, therefore the connections are complex to analyze and design. When the structural member fails in case of overloading then there is a general practice to prefer the individual member rather than the connections, therefore this kind of practice affects many structural members. The cost of structural steel consists of major portion of connections and that is the reason primary importance should be given to the design of connections for safety and economy of structure. The connections are generally provided in the following cases. When there is the requirement to cater the heavy load and long span then the build-up sections are to be provided. In this case, this section should be connected together to get a good section. In case of longer span, the length of standard section needs to be connected with other section. In this case to connect the multiple sections proper design of connections are important. The different members need to be connected at the end, for example secondary beams to be connected to primary beam, column, footings, etc. The classification in the connections provided in the steel structure is as follows. Riveted connections Bolted connections Welded connections Pinned connections Riveted connections Rivet a rivet is made up of round ductile steel bar which is called as shank and with a head at the one end. It is made up of mild steel or high tensile steel. The riveted connections are nowadays obsolete. The understanding of this type of connections for the strength evaluation and rehabilitation for an older structure is essential. While the connection procedure for riveted connections is same as that of the bolted connections. Riveting Riveting is the particular method of connecting together pieces of metal. This process is conducted by inserting the ductile metal pins called as rivet into the holes of pieces to be joined and formed a head at the end of the rivet to prevent each metal piece from coming out. The shank of the rivet is made up of the length to the extent through the different parts which is to be connected and with sufficient extra length for a skinned head to be made at the other end. 
The rivets are generally classified as follows. Hot driven rivets, the rivets which are driven in the hot conditions. Shop rivets, the rivets which are placed in workshop. Field rivets, the rivets which are placed in the site field. Cold driven rivets, since high pressure is required to form the head at room temperature this type of rivet is limited. Clamp Action When hot driven rivets are properly cooled down then the diameter and shank length get reduced. Because of this, the compression of the plates occurs and that results in friction between the plates, this process is called as clamp action. Disadvantages of riveted connections are as follows. It is associated with very high level of noise pollution. There is a need to heat the rivet till red hot color. Skilled labors are necessary to inspect the connection. The cost to remove the poorly installed rivet is very high. The high cost installation in the connection. Bolted connection. Most commonly used connections include the bolted connections. This connection has the advantage of flexibility in assembling parts of the structure as well as dissembling it and which is necessary if there is inspection or some routine maintenance. This type of connections is applicable for members subjected to tension or shear or both tension and shear. A bolt is a metal pin with a head formed at one end and the shank threaded at the other end so that nut can be received. Generally, the bolts are used to connect the pieces of metals by inserting them through the holes in the metals, at the threaded end, nuts should be tightened. Classification of Bolted Connections the classifications of bolted connections are made on the basis of resultant force transferred, type of force and force mechanism. On the basis of resultant force transferred. Concentric connections, when the load of structural member passes through the CG of the section then this type of connections are made. Eccentric connections, whenever the resultant force is acting away from the CG of the connections. Moment resisting connections, whenever the connections are subjected to moments. On the basis of type of force. The connections are classified as shear connections when the transfer of load occurred through shear. Example, lap joint, butt joint. Tension connection, whenever the transfer of load occurred through tension on the bolts. Combined tension shear connections. Whenever the bracket connection is used to connect the inclined member to the column of the structure. On the basis of force mechanism. Bearing type connections, to transfer the force bolts bear against the hole. Friction type connections. Due to tensioning of the bolts the force is transferred through friction between the plates. The Design Philosophy The conventional method to analyze the connection is based on the following conditions. 
the deformation of the connection is ignored as the connected elements of the structures is considered as rigid connections. The connectors used to connect different elements of the section behave like linear. Elastic way until it fails. The ductility property of connectors of the structures is unlimited. In practical situations, the connected sections like angles, gusset plates, etc. are flexible deformation occurs at the low intensity of load also. The advantages of bolted connections are as follows. The process of erection of structure can be made faster. Skilled labors are not necessary. Connections do not involve the noise. Requirement of labors is less. Immediate use of structure is possible in case of bolted connection. The alternative arrangement of structural members is possible if required. Lesser working area is required. The disadvantages of bolted connections are as follows. The material cost is very high. Due to the area reduction at the root of the thread and due to concentration of stress, the tensile strength of this type of connection is reduced. Bolts get loose if it is subjected to vibrations or shocks. Welded Connection Welding is the method of locally melting the metals sheets or plates overlapping or budding. With intensive heating along with a filler metal or without it and allowing cooling them to form a coherent mass, thus creating ash wang. A typical weld showing various zones of weld is shown in figure. Such joints can be created to make structures, boilers, pressure vessels, etc. and are more conveniently made in steel. The progress has been made in welding several types of steels, but large structure size may impede the use of automatic techniques and heat treatment which becomes necessary in some cases. Types of Welded Joints Welds may be classified into two main types namely butt weld and fillet weld. Butt weld This type of weld is used when the members are in same plane. Butt weld is also termed as groove weld. The butt weld is used to join structural members carrying direct compression or tension. It is used to make T-joint and butt joint. The following types of butt welds are in practice. These are named depending upon shape of the grove made for welding. Square butt weld A square butt weld is a weld in the preparation of which the fusion faces lie approximately at right angles to the surfaces of the components to be joined and are substantially parallel to one another, figure on figure B. Single V butt weld A single V butt weld is awled in the preparation of which the edges of both components are prepared so that in the cross section, the fusion faces form AVAs shown in figure. Double V butt weld 
A double V butt weld is oiled in the preparation of which the edges of both components are double beveled so that in cross section, the fusion faces form two opposing Vs as shown in figure. Single U butt weld a single U-butt weld is oiled in the preparation of which the edges of both components are prepared so that in the cross section, the fusion faces form AUAs shown in figure. Double U-butt weld A double U-butt weld is a weld in the preparation of which the edges of both components are prepared so that in the cross section, the fusion faces form two opposing U's as shown in figure. Single J-butt weld A single J-butt weld is a weld in the preparation of which the edges of one component are prepared so that in the cross section, the fusion faces is in the form age and the fusion face of the other component is at right angles to the surface of the first component as shown in figure. Double J butt weld A double J butt weld is a weld in the preparation of which the edges of one component are prepared so that in the cross section, the fusion faces is in the form of two opposing JS and the fusion face of the other component is at right angles to the surface of the first component as shown in figure. Single Bevel Butt Weld a single bevel butt weld is oiled in the preparation of which the edge of one component is beveled and the fusion face of the other component is at right angles to the surface of the first component as shown in figure. Double Bevel Butt Weld a double bevel butt weld is a weld in the preparation of which the edges of one component are double beveled and the fusion face of the other component is at right angles to the surface of the first component as shown in figure. Size of butt weld The size of a butt weld is specified by the effective throat thickness. The effective throat thickness in case of complete penetration butt weld is taken as the thickness of thinner part joined. The double V, double U, double J, and double bevel butt welds are the examples of complete penetration butt weld. The effective throat thickness in case of incomplete penetration butt weld is taken as 7 eighths of the thickness of the thinner part joined. But for the purpose of stress calculation, a required effective throat thickness not exceeding 5 eighths of the thickness of thinner part joined should be used. An incomplete penetration butt weld is also termed as unsealed single butt weld. Single V, single U, single J, single bevel butt joints are the examples of incomplete penetration butt weld. An incomplete penetration butt weld the weld metal is not deposited intentionally through the full thickness of the joint. The unwelded portion in incomplete penetration butt weld, welded from both sides shall not be greater than one-fourth of the thickness of thinner part joint and should be central in the depth of the weld. The unsealed butt welds V, U, J, and bevel types and incomplete penetration butt welds should not be used for highly stressed joints and joints subjected to dynamic, repeated or alternating forces. The shall also not be subjected to abending moment about the longitudinal axis of the weld other than that normally resulting from the eccentricity of the weld metal relative to the parts joined.
Effective length of butt weld The effective length of butt weld is the length for which the specified size, throat thickness, of the weld exists. Effective area of butt weld the effective area of a butt weld is taken as the product of the effective throat thickness and the effective length of butt weld. Reinforcement The extra metal deposited above the surface of the parent metal as shown in figure is called reinforcement. This reinforcement is provided to give sufficient surfaces convexity and to ensure full effectiveness at the joint. Reinforcement requires a minimum practical surface convexity of 1 mm. This reinforcement should not exceed 3.0 mm. This is not considered as part of throat thickness. This reinforcement may also be removed if a flush surface is desired. When the structural members of unequal thickness are butt welded and difference in thickness of members exceeds 25% of the thinner part Oregon 3.0 mm in metal arc welding. 6.0 mm or more in oxyacetylene welding, the thicker part is beveled so that the slop of the surface from one part to the other is not steeper than 1 in 5 as shown in figure A. Where this arrangement is not practicable, the weld metal should be built up at the junction with the thicker part to dimension at least 25% or greater than that of the thinner part in metal arc welding as shown in figure B. Alternatively, the weld metal should be built up to the dimensions of thicker members as shown in figure C. In case of complete penetration but weld, Generally, Dane calculations are not necessary, as these will usually provide the strength at the joint equal to the strength of the member connected. Fillet weld This type of weld is used when the members to be connected overlap each other. A fillet weld is a weld of approximately triangular cross-section joining two surfaces approximately as right angles to each other in lap joint or T-joint. A fillet weld is shown in figure. When the cross-section of fillet weld is 45, isosceles triangle as shown in figure below. It is known as a standard fillet weld. The standard 45 fillet weld is generally used. When the cross section of the fillet weld is 30 and 60 triangle as shown in figure, it is known as a special fillet weld. A fillet weld is termed as concave fillet weld or convex fillet weld or mitre fillet weld depending on the weld face in concave or convex or approximately flat as shown in figure, respectively. A fillet weld is termed as normal fillet weld or deep penetration fillet weld depending upon the depth of penetration beyond the root is less than 2.4 mm or more respectively. The fillet welds are of three types as shown in figure. Side fillet welded is fillet weld stressed in longitudinal shear, i.e., a fillet weld the axis of which is parallel to the direction of these applied loads. It is also termed as longitudinal fillet weld. End fillet weld It is a fillet weld stressed in transverse shear, i.e., a fillet weld, the axis of which is at right angles to the direction of the applied load. It is also termed as transverse fillet weld.
Diagonal fillet weld It is a fillet weld the axis of which is inclined to the direction of the applied load. A fillet weld is placed on the sides or end of the base metal and it is subjected to shear along with tension or compression and usually bending. Specification of fillet weld Size of fillet weld The size of normal fillet weld is specified as minimum leg length of a convex or miter fillet weld or one. 414 times the effective throat thickness of a concave fillet weld. The size of deep penetration fillet weld is specified as minimum leg length plus 2.4 mm. The length of leg is the distance from the root to the toe of a fillet weld, measured along the fusion face. The International Standard Code has recommended the minimum size of the weld. If the thickness of thicker part is up to 10 mm, the minimum size of the welding is 3 mm. If the thickness of thicker part is in between 10 mm to 20 mm, the minimum size of the welding is 5 mm. If the thickness of thicker part is in between 20 mm to 32 mm, the minimum size of the welding is 6 mm. If the thickness of thicker part is above 32 mm, the minimum size of the welding is 10 mm. When the minimum size of the fillet weld is greater than the thickness of the thinner part, the minimum size of the weld should be equal to the thickness of thinner part. Where the thicker part is more than 50 mm, special precaution like preheating will have to be taken. Effective Throat Thickness the effective throat thickness of a fillet weld is the perpendicular distance from the root to the hypotenuse of the largest isosceles right-angled triangle that can be inscribed within the weld cross-section. The effective throat thickness of a fillet weld shall not be less than 3 mm and shall generally not exceed 0.7 times the thickness of thinner part and equal to the thickness of thinner part under special circumstances. Effective throat thickness equals 0.7 times size of weld. In general, for the purpose of stress calculation. Effective throat thickness equals K times size of weld. Where K is a constant. The value of K for different angles between fusion faces is adopted as per table as recommended in IS 816-1969. Value of K for different angles between fusion faces. Angle between fusion faces. Value of constant, K 60 degrees 90 degrees. 0 0.70, 91 degrees 100 degrees. 0 0.60, 101 degrees 106 degrees. 0 0.60, 107 degrees 113 degrees. 0 0.55, 114 degrees 120 degrees. 0 0.50. 0.50 Effective length The effective length of the weld is the length of the weld for which the specified size and throat thickness i.e., correctly proportioned cross-section of the weld, 
exist. It is taken as the actual length minus twice the size of weld, since the specified size and throat thickness do not exist at the ends. The effective length of the weld is shown on the drawings. In practice the actual length of weld is made equal to the effective length shown on the drawing plus twice the weld size. The effective length of fillet weld should not be less than four times the size of the weld. When the ends are returned as shown in figure, then the ends should be carried continuous around the corners for distance not less than twice the size of weld. This should be applied particularly to side and top fillet weld intention. Effective Area The effective area of a fillet weld is taken as the product of effective length and effective throat thickness. Advantages and Disadvantages of Steel Structures In general, the advantages of steel structures are as follows. Steel has a high strength to weight ratio. Therefore the dead weight of steel structures is relatively small. This property makes steel a very attractive structural material for some multi-story building, long span bridges, etc. It can undergo the plastic deformation before failure, this provides greater reserve strength. This property is called as ductility. Properties of steel can be predicted with a very high degree of certainty. In fact, steel shows elastic behavior up to a relatively high and usually well-defined stress level. Steel structures can be built with the high-quality relationship and narrow tolerances. Prefabrication and mass production is usually possible in steel structures. The rapid construction is possible in the steel structures. This results in economic construction of steel structures. The good fatigue strength is also the advantage of steel structure. If necessary, the steel structures can be strengthened any time in future. The reused capability of steel construction is also the advantage. While in general, the disadvantages of steel structures are as follows. Steel structures are more costly than other types of structures. The strength of steel is reduced considerably when heated at temperatures commonly observed in fire, therefore the treatment of fireproof is needed. The steel structures when exposed to air and water as in the case of bridges, there is a big possibility of corrosion and it needs regular maintenance. Thank you for watching. For now, please subscribe, like. Share and do not forget to press bell icon.